Hey everybody. So um, I wanted to do this a little while ago, actually before The Last Jedi came out, but oops. So because the movie's been out for several weeks, I feel like I can talk somewhat freely. For me, watching The Force Awakens, I felt like, and then watching The Last Jedi, I felt like there were a lot of things that were set up in The Force Awakens that then they took on in The Last Jedi, which, duh, that's what you're going to do in any film series, and especially Star Wars, is pick up on those threads. However, there were a few critical scenes that I wanted to analyze because not only do they kind of push forward in The Last Jedi as I suspected they would, but also that Ryan Johnson himself has come out and said, at least for the scene that I'm about to review, um, that he picked up on a lot of things going on in this scene and wanted to pull upon those threads and play with them and uh, explore them, which I think is really cool. Beyond that, I just think it's interesting because a lot of the um, criticism of The Force Awakens was that it was just too much beat for beat, like A New Hope. And what I wanted to talk about here was how it's really not because of these scenes and the way they're executed and the fact that we're taking you know, a more adult approach, for lack of a better word, to Star Wars. And I just mean that in the sense of not that the original films never contained these moments, because they did, of course, because people have spent so many years loving and watching and, you know, picking up new things. But what I really liked is, I guess then, transition for me, as someone who watched this growing up all throughout my life, from the time I was very, very little, and then all the way up until now, it's really fun for me as an adult to enjoy these films because I can see the storytelling threads, the fact that there's like small complications and there's like little minute details, you know, those those finer points of storytelling and filmmaking. And I can pick up on those now as an adult and I can see the transition from the old to the new and I really like that. So uh, without me blathering on anymore, I'm just gonna get straight into it. What I'm gonna do is watch the scene, watch, review slash react to it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that'll do it for now. So the, the scene that I'm gonna to analyze more, the interrogation scene between Kylo Ren and Rey in The Force Awakens. My pork with me. Where am I? You're my guest. Where are the others? Maybe the murderers. Traitors and thieves, you call friends. You'll be relieved to hear I have no idea. You still want to kill me? That happens when you're being hunted by a creature in a mask. Okay, so right away, she calls him out on being a thing. And I think it's really interesting because as our expectation as the audience, it's like, okay, he's wearing a helmet and we know this character's trying to emulate Vader, which, you know, part of the reason for the helmet, but also just because going to the line, we know Ben Solo can't really hide his emotions on his face. Um, but more importantly, I think it's interesting because she calls him out on being a monster. And then, um, you know, the first thing he does is to reveal that he's not a monster, like show uh, her his face and we're all like it's actually kind of great because Daisy really did a great job of going wait what and like it was so subtle again the acting in here is spectacular and there's a lot of close shots to their face but I feel like Adam and Daisy did a great job with this scene but like there's a close shot to her face where she's like wait what and I, as an audience member I had that same reaction because like I knew and they established it early on in the film that he's like you know the son of Han and Leia and you're like oh oh my god so there's that and then you know because for Vader, he needed that helmet to survive, and there's he's also masking that hideousness and all those things. Here, that's not the case. And the first thing she does is call him out on being a monster, and he's the fir his first instinct is to show her that he's not, which I find very interesting. So, and very telling, and I think kind of feeds into what we see in the events of The Last Jedi going down the road. <clears throat> We're covered from the archives of the Empire, but we need the last piece. And somehow you convinced the droid to show it to you. 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 The scavenger. You know I can take whatever I want. Ooh. Now, I just want to talk about that real quick because a lot of people, I think people continue to feel uncomfortable with this scene because of, you know, him 
making that comment and you know I can take whatever I want really like mm, it's not it's a little ooh. when I heard that as again as an audience member and it's so I was like oh you know and then he's using the force on her but in that moment just if you pause and connect it or connect it to compare it to the scene where he's doing the same thing to Poe interrogating with the force and like forcefully you know is like you you know trying to use it to get an answer and it's kind of it's it's it you know that scene is very different it's dark lighting he's got the helmet on and his hood up he's completely like Kylo Ren here he's kind of burying himself to her and you know trying to get answers out of her head kind of in a way and I know people have a problem with that line but the thing about it is that from the very moment in which Ray is abducted by him in the forest, I was not even concerned because uh, there was such a great buildup of her character and strength of her character to just know she's reliant on herself and is very, very capable and has lived for many years by relying and surviving on her own. So not for one moment when she was taken away by him that I felt like she was in serious danger just because of the character um, from the beginning, even though I think they wanted to make him seem more like a villain, but I didn't, I, I sensed otherwise, especially because for me, as the son of two legacy characters, I don't really feel like he's going to be fully evil and he's gonna have that conflict, but also, be, so I didn't think he had the heart um, to hurt her, but also because of what I know about Rey as a character, I was like, she'll be fine. She's a completely self-sufficient person. So she's being carted away and kidnapped. I'm like, that's not even really like a kidnapping, like I'm not even worried about it, which is such a great thing for the character. And I think you need to feel that, that independence of her when, you know, like again, I just, it was this really nice feeling that just clicked into place when you see her being taken away. I was like, she'll get out of there. She may not be able to get out of there all the way by her own, but she'll get out of there most of the way on the own, which is exactly what happened. So she was able to just get out and like, you know, kind of escape as much as she could, but actually getting out and like finding her way off. Yes, Finn and Han and Chewie came to rescue her, but I didn't feel for one second that she was going to be completely strained and, and useless and like, oh, come save me, just like Leia. You know, Luke and Han devised this not so great plan to come save her, and then when they get in there, they really don't have a way for getting out, and she's the one that does it. So I kind of felt the same way here, is in she's being taken, yes, but I was like, mm, she's like, a scrappy fighter she'll find a way to get out of there on her own which is such a great development of the character the way they imagined it and the way Daisy uh, has played it so that was also a nice thing so when he's threatening her with this I wasn't really a scared or worried or uncomfortable I thought it was an interesting thing that he could say but it, it felt like for me he was playing more part of which like he's so confident in his force abilities and he doesn't know anything about her. So, uh, but I wasn't, um, I wasn't concerned as far as like the implication of that, of that line. I think some people were, and I just, because of how they established her, I wasn't concerned. So anyway, all right. Imagine an ocean. I see it. I see the island. Do you see this place? Only in dreams, so back to. And Han Solo. You feel like he's the father you never had. He would have disappointed you. Get out of my head. That feeds in later. About I know you've seen the map. Ben's feelings about his father. It's in there. Interesting. And now you'll give it to me. Also, the ceiling is the exact same ceiling from like the scene where they toss them in in Bespin. Same ceiling. Everybody knows that. Don't be afraid. I feel it too. I'm not giving you anything. We'll see. we'll see. The sound editing in here is so good. It's amazing. Because you can feel it literally being pushed and pulled between the two of them. This is so good. And also the acting is really, I mean like they're just sitting there you have to believe that they're pushing this invisible force between them and again I'm really blown away by what J.J. Uh, Abrams kind of imagined in films and also what he got from Daisy and Adam they did a great job this is perfect and then you could sense it going to you are afraid. Afraid. afraid that you will never be as strong as Darth Vader Ooh. <laughs> but you felt that you could hear it. You could hear the, uh, the push-pull of the, um... Alright. 
Yeah, that's enough of that. Anyway, so, I mean, the sound editing is so good. And I love that moment where it just goes, and it's like, it, it, it stops in that moment where you can feel like, okay, she's got the control, and she says, you're afraid. Because at that point, they're pushing and pulling, but then she's pushed her way into her, into his mind while he's trying to push into hers, and it's not really working. And there's this back and forth. And you can see, and again, that shot of, like, it's her, like, looking steadfastly at him, and, like, and it's, like, slowly painting from her face to his outstretched hand and letting you know the transfer of power from that into him. And it's, like, you know, it's him trying to, get into her and then like she's pushing it right back through his hand and then right back into him it's so good um so this scene is i don't know this scene is great there's so much here to be said and so but also the, to talk about just really quickly too is just this the use of the force and you know how we're using it in one's mind because we saw that a little bit in the original trilogy but there's this real like getting into one's head and forcing them to you know, say what's in their mind and pushing and pulling it and like, you know, trying to like, I don't know. It's a little hard to explain, but again, between the acting and the sound editing and all of that, it was like, it was spectacularly executed. And I was like super thrilled because I was like, no, I feel this. I feel the force being pushed and pulled between the two of them. It's amazing. It was just unlike anything we had seen before and I think and so there we go so this is one of those things that kicked off and here's the one thing I will say about the last shot I have full spoilers right now for this one particular comment I don't believe for one freaking second that, okay so Snoke might have like fanned the flame of the connection between the two of them with their like little force time things that they were having but here is where that connection was forged and to say that and well or at least to just say for that um at the very, very end of The Last Jedi, you know, they have that one last look where, again, it's almost as if they're right in front of each other and Rey's looking down at him and he's looking up at her. He's in the rebel base. She's in the Falcon. She's about to shut the door and then she gives him this one last look. And then, so even after he's, you know, people have made the whole thing of like, okay, Snoke's been killed. The bond should be the bond should be no more because he's the one that created it. no because she looked straight at him at the eyes as if they had been this entire movie of all those times they've connected over the through the force and just shut the door in his face going like you know you know I gave you a chance you didn't take it but that's that's another conversation but more or less that after Snoke is dead it looks as though the bond is still you know alive and I'm thinking I think that it's from what they're doing here messing around with the force and each other's heads not really knowing what they're doing they're pushing and pulling and I think now this connection has been forged and maybe I think Snoke took credit for it slash kind of you know um maybe he like kind of you know again like I said fan that flame and kind of was able to make it more than it was but I don't think for a second he is the full um reason for it nor do I think it's severed now that he's dead so that's my first you know my first scene that I wanted to review and you know talk about its connection how it's different from <laughs> A New Hope this is a nice little uh breather at least as far as we're talking about the force and like how we see its use and I think it was very different and I think it was not not something outside of the realm of impossible and it was really fascinating and I really liked it and I think if you delve in more into like the novels or even the Clone Wars series or you know or Rebels any any of the outside existing stuff we see different uses of the force a little bit more not so much in the mainstream films and that's why I think this is very very fascinating and uh, different. I'm gonna go on and do, there's two more scenes that I wanna talk about, not just for the implications of the characters going on to The Last Jedi, but also what they mean and how they're different and how this is not a rehash of A New Hope. I don't care what, I don't care what anybody says. But anyway, I, I think that's it for now and uh, I'll just leave you guys with my little friend and myself.